It was on July 9, 2020, when Briasia Terrell had gone with her eight-year-old half-brother, D.L., to sleep over at the Jersey Meadow Apartments in Davenport at the 2700 block of East 53rd Street that Henry Dinkins, D.L.'s father, lived at with his girlfriend, Andrea Cuberson. By the next morning, Briasia was gone, never to be seen alive again. Let's get into it. Henry was involved in the lives of Briasia and D.L., but not on a consistent basis. Prior to July 9th, Aisha, their mother, had talked with Henry, encouraging him to be more involved in D.L.'s life. Therefore, Henry made plans with Aisha to spend time with D.L. on July 9th. Henry goes to their grandmother's to pick up D.L. When he arrives, D.L. wants Briasia and his older brother to also go with him. Henry was okay with Briasia coming, but not their older brother because he claimed there was not enough room for the three. When Aisha arrived home from work, she was informed by her mother that Henry picked up D.L. and Briasia. Aisha grabbed some PJs and something for them to wear the next day. When she arrived at Jersey Meadow Apartments, Briasia went to the car to collect their belongings while being excited to see her mom and the family doll. While at the apartment, they played video games, ate dinner, and showered, and then eventually got ready for bed. For some reason, they didn't put the pajamas on that Aisha brought. Instead, Henry gave them each one of his 4XL t-shirts to wear. DL and Briasia slept in the bedroom, while Andrea and Henry slept in the living room on a blow-up mattress. Briasia was the first to go to sleep then Andrea, and soon after, D.L. went to sleep. Henry lays down on the couch, but he doesn't go to sleep. Around 2 a.m., he decides to wake Briasia up. Briasia gets up, and they start walking towards the front door. Now, Andrea was a very heavy sleeper. She didn't hear them leaving, but D.L. did. Henry and Briasia get into the maroon Chevy Impala, and video surveillance shows the car driving northbound on Smith's Road. At 2.13 a.m., minutes later, video footage shows the Impala parked at Henry's RV, located at 743 Smith's Road. Now, his RV didn't have electricity, it didn't have running water, but it did have a bed. Later on, they wouldn't be able to find Briasia's DNA inside of the RV, but they did find bleach. So it was clear to the prosecution that Henry took Briasia inside of the RV and he raped her. He knew he couldn't do it inside of his apartment since Andrea and DL was there. So he took her to the RV where he could have her all alone. And then after the assault, he cleaned everything up with the bleach to cover his tracks. Henry quickly realized that Briasia was going to tell someone about this. According to her family, she was a rule follower, and she always told the truth. There's no telling what Briasia even said to Henry, but it's here when he decided he needed to kill her to shut her up. Now, Andrea was also at the apartment the night when Dinkins made the choice to remove Briasia from the apartment. She told authorities that she fell asleep between 11 p.m. and midnight. She woke up to use the bathroom around 3 a.m. She noticed D.L. was in the bed and Dinkins and Briasia was gone. Andrea began to have a horrible feeling. She even grabs her phone to call Henry to see where he is. But as soon as she goes to call his phone, she sees it sitting on the counter, which only makes her feel more unsettled. Henry never goes anywhere without his phone. He knew the only reason he would leave it behind is so that he couldn't be traced. 
Concerned, she stayed up in the living room to wait for Henry to return. At 3.30 a.m., Andrea heard Henry open the door to the apartment very quietly and proceed up the stairs very quietly, as if not wanting to awaken anyone. She said he wouldn't respond to her questions about where he'd been or where Briasia was. While Dinkins rummaged through the closet, Cumberson said she looked out the window and saw Briasia outside standing next to the passenger side of Dinkins' maroon Chevy Impala. She was wearing a large white shirt belonging to Dinkins that she had been given to sleep in. Andrea said Dinkins grabbed something from the closet and left again without his cell phone. She was unable to see what he retrieved from the closet. The court learns that Henry either retrieved the gun he used to kill Briasia or another item that facilitated his murder of Briasia. The defense argues there is no one testifying that saw Briasia in the Impala. Although this is true, the court is relying on its common sense and experience that if Briasia did not go with Henry, then she would have entered the apartment or knocked loudly to gain access to the apartment. Briasia was not familiar with the complex. If she was not with Henry, she would want it to be where her brother was. At 3.31 a.m., Dinkins was seen getting out of the Impala at Quick Stop on West 53rd Street in Davenport to get gas. During this time at the Quick Stop, it is evident that Henry is ensuring that Briasia remains in the vehicle while he is inside the store. From the Quick Stop, video surveillance would show the Impala driving on Highway 61 at 3.44 a.m. He and Briasia drive out to Credit Allen. It is heartbreaking to think at this moment what Briasia could have been thinking in her mind. Eventually, Henry pulls the car over to the side of the road and orders Briasia out of the car. Once they were deep into the woods, Henry shot Briasia twice, once in the back and once in the jaw. The area that they were located was so isolated, no one would hear the gunshots. In the process of leaving the area, Henry became stuck off the side of the road. It's pouring down, raining, so the right tires on the Impala are stuck in the mud. He walks to US 61 and flags down a vehicle driven by Jared Brink. Brink then proceeds to drive Henry back to the area where the Chevy Impala was stuck off the roadway. Brink then removed the vehicle utilizing a chain. Henry offered Brink $100 for his help, which Brink refused. After Briasia's case hit the media, Jared Brink would come forward with this information and he gave investigators Henry's exact physical description. Brink identified a very distinctive characteristic of Henry's face, which was a mole on the right side of his face by his nose. Related itself. Okay. In 2020, during the early morning hours, Jared Brink took his average route to work. About a half mile around the corner, and a black man jumped out the road in front of me okay. and waved his arms. The man told Brink he was stuck in a ditch. Yeah, and said he made a wrong turn. He was coming back from Clinton and Davenport. Brink decided to help that man out of the ditch. When I looked at him, I did not suspect anything like of an abnormal person. Okay. The man then offering Brink $100 multiple times. Brink declined before resuming his normal day. What color was the car? Most positive was maroon. Maroon. But this interview took place nearly a year after the incident, after Brink says he heard about a body being discovered near the pond and told his friend. I said, you know what's weird about them finding that body up there or whatever? I said, last fall. And I said, I can't remember the date. I said, I pulled a black man out of the ditch here. His friend showing Brink a flyer of Henry Dinkins and his maroon Chevy Impala. I said, oh my God. He said, you don't know the maroon Impala? And I said, no, what? what? Well, that's the girl that's missing. That's mm -hmm. speculating that's that car. Brinks then identifies the shorts the man wore. For some reason, I see kind of some kind of blue design okay. in, in the shorts. The location, shorts, and time of mourning all pointing towards Henry Dinkins. 
In Davenport, Nina Burns, WQED News 8. Jared gave his cell phone over to the police and they were able to verify that he was in the area at 4.30 a.m. on July 10th. Now, something else Jared noticed was that no one else was inside the Chevy Impala. Dinkins returned home briefly. DL wakes up again around 5.30 a.m. and according to Andrea, he's crying. And Andrea sit in the living room, and around about 55 a.m., Henry finally comes back home. But this time, Briasia isn't with him. Henry didn't expect anyone to be up, and after walking through the front door, he's kind of frantic. Andrea starts asking him what's going on. He won't say. He just keeps saying there was an issue. I'll talk to you about it later. Henry then tells his son, D.L., to grab his bag, and the two of them leave the apartment. This time, when he tries to leave without his phone, Andrea makes him take it. However, before leaving, he takes the battery out so it can't be traced. Andrea was surprised to see Henry in a different set of clothes. She testified when she fell asleep, he was wearing a white tank top and colorful shorts. When he arrived back at the apartment to pick up DL, he was in a white t-shirt and blue shorts. D.L. testified that he and Dinkins traveled for a while before coming to a Walmart in Clinton where they arrived about 7 a.m. Video surveillance shows Dinkins inside the store purchasing two bottles of Clorox bleach while D.L. waited in the car. D.L. was in the car bored, so that was when he looks into the cup holder and sees Dinkins' phone. D.L. puts the battery into the cell phone so he could play a game on it. D.L. sees Henry returning back to the car, so he removed the battery again to keep from getting in trouble. D cell phone records of ping notifications of Henry's cell phone at Walmart in Clinton. It was only due to D.L.'s statement that he had placed the battery back in his father's phone to play a game and then took it out upon his father's return from being in the store. This information led to further investigation as to Henry actually being in Clinton Walmart and purchasing the bleach. At the time of DL's statements, there was no knowledge of a purchase of bleach. Henry had no idea that DL turned his phone on in Clinton. DL said Dinkins put the bottles of bleach into the trunk and he and Dinkins went back to Credit Allen where his sister's body was. Dinkins pulled out the bleach and a machete from the trunk and made his way into the woods while D.L. stayed in the car. He started cutting through the brush with the machete and then he would use the brush to cover up her body. Once he was finished, he poured bleach all over everything to destroy any of his DNA. Now, clearly by the time Henry gets back into the car with D.L., D.L. wants to know what's going on. And Henry just tells him that he had gone fishing with some friends over the hill earlier that morning. After leaving Credit Allen, the two of them would drive back to Henry's RV and again D.L. waits in the car. As his dad gets out and grabs the machete, he then watches Henry wipe the machete off with a rag and put it inside of his RV. Fully convinced that he's covered his tracks and it's only at this point he finally decides to tell Briasia's mom that she is missing. Aisha had just clocked in to work shortly after 8 a.m. at Checkers in Davenport when she gets a text from Henry saying, I just woke up and Briasia is gone. Aisha starts calling him over and over again, trying to understand what's going on, but he won't answer. And when he finally does answer, Henry confirms her worst nightmare. He says that they all went to sleep and by the time they woke up, Briasia was gone. Aisha is in hysterics. And once she finally comes to terms with what's happening, she's angry. The next thing out of her mouth was, have you called the police? Henry says, no, he hasn't. But he's in the car with DL, their son, and he's on the way to the police station. Aisha hangs up the phone and she calls the police herself after telling them the situation at hand. Aisha's boss let her leave and she starts making her way to the police department to meet Henry. Except on her way there, she noticed Henry's car going in the opposite direction of the police department. So red flags are immediately going up everywhere. 
She did a U-turn, drove up close behind him, honking her horn to get his attention until he pulled over into the parking lot of a McDonald's on Kimberly Road. Aisha gets out of the car and confronts him. What the hell is going on? Where is my baby? She asks. She then grabs her son, DL, and says, I don't want you anywhere near him when you've already lost my other baby. And another question she has for him is, what are you doing in this part of town? You told me you were on your way to the police station. Now, Henry starts going on and on about how he didn't know his home address and he needed to turn back around so he could get the address. She and Henry get into their cars and Aisha follows him back to the apartment. She had also communicated with Davenport, the police department, and an officer was sent out to meet her. 614 West 63rd Street, apartment number one. Phone number? 563 yep. 676 4247. Okay. Um, and Henry lives here? Yeah, I guess so. This is where he told me to come. Okay. Um, he don't even know how long she's even been gone. Yeah. Uh, what's uh, her your daughter's name? Briasia B R E A. E A. S I A. B R E A S I A. Yes. Okay. Sorrel T E R R E L L. Okay. What's her middle initial? D. Her date of birth? Um, okay. What's up, Henry? So when was the last time you saw her? She was in the house. Yeah, when was the last time you saw her? 9.30. Last night? 9.30. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. When was the last time you saw her? She was in the bed when I was coming She was in the bed? Yeah. When you went to bed last night? Okay. Um, this is crazy, man. This yeah. is like, you know what I'm saying? I know she fucking going fucking hysterical, big brother. Yeah. D I N K I N S. Uh, your date of birth, Henry? August 2nd, 72. Is this your home address? No. What's your address? It's down by Boston Carino. Just a guy, just. Yeah, I, I just know that. You I don't, don't know, know your I address? I don't know the full address. Do you know your phone number? Uh, hell no, I don't even know that either. I swear to God, I don't. Henry, you don't know where your daughter is, you don't know your address, and you no, don't no, know no, your no, phone no, number. No, for real, I'm finna give it to you You think I'll be lying, but... Well, no, it's just, it's, it's okay. kind of a... I don't, I don't call myself. I know, but you gotta know your number. You gotta know your address. I don't. So this is your girlfriend's address here. This is good for it. Okay. Okay. Here go my phone number. Right okay. What was she last wearing? In the bed. Uh, uh -huh. what you have on some shorts? What color? I don't remember. I mean, I, I'm I'm not going to lie to you. I don't What's remember. her height and weight? You think? She's a little taller than he is. She's sister. Okay. She's a little taller than that. Yeah. Like okay, what's her what kind of what's her hair look like? She long, dreads. Long, long, yeah. long and dreads hair. Long and dreads hair. Like shoulder length or Down. middle of the back? Down here. Okay. Mid back dreads. Right? Is that how we would yes. label that? Yes. Um she had shorts on. Does she had does she still had a white shirt on? She had that long that she had the shirt that you gave her. The white shirt. White all white? white all white t-shirt, yep. And you guys don't have alarms or anything on your doors if the door is open? No. Okay. No. You should um, get one. You should get one. And I'm talking about getting one. Listen, I know this sounds dumb. I, I've lost my kids too. Right. Okay. Um, actually, mine just happened last week. And we went back in and we found them in the bedroom. No, we just searched. Okay, just, just searched. I, I'm gonna ask you to who, who have you called? Who, no, what doors called. have you knocked on? I, I, I don't know these people out here. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Cause, but I called her. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And she told me she was at work. At first, I was riding around looking. Yeah. And then 
Me and my son started riding around looking. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And then, so how long ago did you? Has it been an hour? It's been a couple hours. A couple hours? A couple hours. Okay. Um, have we called grandmas? Uh, have we called cousins? That's what, I, that's what I just asked. She the one. I don't know all that. She knows all that. She called my grandma already. She okay. knows all that, not me. Okay. Do we have a picture? She does. Okay. Yeah. Mom. Yeah, she got the picture of me. Who's the girl that lives here? Andrea. Andrea? Yeah. What's Andrea's last name? He need a picture of her. You don't have nothing with you right now. Okay, that's fine. Have we called um, family? I've called everybody. I have my okay. uncle out riding around. My mom's on her way out here. My we've been everywhere. Out we've here. been every okay. fucking way. And and she's she's gonna be with a friend inside some apartment. That's most why likely. I said I'm, I'm gonna still look. Okay. We don't, we don't know anybody out here. Though. That's yeah. the thing. Okay. She would have never. She would, How many? She would have never. First she, of all, she would have never woke up at eight o'clock in the morning. She would have I, never. What you mean? Eight she, o'clock in the morning. I'm just saying. That, that ain't what I she said. I never said that. Guys, guys, this isn't the time to fight. Exactly. I don't give a fuck about you walking, yeah, nigga. Listen, you man. lost her though. How did I fucking lose? Because shit. you was watching her, Henry. What the fuck do you mean? But hey. I'm gone, sir. Come on, D. Listen to me. Well, you guys gotta, you guys gotta come together right now. This isn't a time to fight about it. Okay. Um, so, well, hey, if you, well, how am I supposed to, what, what do you want me to do? I got everything, bro, I got everything. You see how she, she stepped on me? You know what I'm saying? I mean, saying? like I fucking, like I, I got no picture, I got no, what do you listen, want me to do? What am I supposed to do? You right. Know what I'm saying? I get it. I do Henry, I get it. I get All it. I can do is look. I get it, Henry. Henry, let's go inside the apartment one more time. Look, this happens more often than you think. We just... I mean... Well, I understand why she's upset. But when I'm trying to help, she can't run away from me. I don't want to... and deal with the issue. Yes. you got to keep a level head. Yeah. You know that. I learned that a long time ago. Fuck, man. Final one, one Um, how many times have you guys stayed out here? How many times have I been out here? Well, kids, this is their first time. Oh, it's the very first yeah. time she's ever stayed here. And so, she has never stayed but they never stayed. She has never stayed here. So I wonder just... This is such a small we get, She's not in our love. I'm fucking mad. She's gonna open the door, man. She's she, she's gonna open. What what's her name? She's gonna open it. Hi there. Are you Andrea? Yes. Okay, Andrea. Um, what's your date of birth, Andrea? So, tell me about, like, when was the last time you saw her? She was here. When? Uh, what time was that? I was saying, like, I'm wrong. I didn't know she was here. She was in the bed sleep. Okay. And you guys never heard her come down and walk out? There's no forced entry or anything like that? No forced entry, no. Uh, okay. Um... Do you mind if I just come in and take a quick look? I'm not concerned about anything else. I just want to come in because probably 50% of the time we still find them inside the place um, when this happens. And well, I kind of do mind my face kind of right right now. What's that? My face is kind of in a wreck. I, listen, I go in all sorts of places. I don't care how big it is. Is he aware of this? What's that? Is he aware of this? Yeah. What's her name again? Bree. Was there any fights or arguments or anything last night? No. Bree is her name? Where was she sleeping at? My bed. Your bed? 
So where were you guys sleeping at last night? You guys slept out here? Look in the closet again. Huh? That's all clothes. I know, I'm just telling you, you'd be surprised what we've. So she was sleeping in the bed with her brother? And you guys slept out here? Okay. What time did you guys wake up? Now, uh, me, I was still asleep. I don't know what time everybody else got up. Well, what time did you wake up? Okay, like 30 minutes ago, two hours ago, two hours ago. Okay. Um. Hey, do you, has she, does she have any friends out here? Like, has she ever played with any of the neighbors? By the time the officer looks through the apartment and walks back outside, Henry is gone. He just left without telling anyone where he was going. Just just jetted. He would later be seen at his mom and his sister's apartment. And from there, he made his way to the police station for an interview. But it also should be noted that by the time he arrived at the police station, he was wearing different shoes. Briasia was reported missing, an Amber Alert was issued, and she was also listed as a missing child with the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. After speaking with her family, it is clear that she did not run away on her own. Like her mom says, she didn't know anyone in that part of town. She wasn't familiar with the area, and more than anything, Briasia was a rule follower. She was not the type of girl to run away. Now, as the officers do their search of the area, they are also looking at security cameras from nearby businesses to see if maybe Briasia could be seen walking around. Instead, they see Henry's maroon Chevy and Paula driving all throughout town in the early morning hours of July 10th, 2020. Now, by the time Henry shows up at the police station, one of the first things the detectives wanted to know is, where is the Impala? And did you drive her car here, or... I'm going to leave that blank. What do you mean? Well, I mean, I, oh, I, I get it. Get it. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I, I kind of yeah. get where you're going at, but uh, is her car parked out front? No. No? no. Is her, where's her Impala at? Her Impala is uh, with, with my homie right now, so... Where at? They moving around in it. Who, who's moving around in it? My homies. Who's that? Lil Vince. What, what's his real name? Vince. Oh, okay. Uh, Vince what? Uh, Harris. And they're riding around in it? Until I call them. Okay. Meanwhile, the town of Davenport was looking everywhere for Briasia. Numerous local, county, state, and federal partner agencies aided by providing aircraft, drones, kayaks, boats, command centers, and countless other types of support, along with hundreds of personnel. By nightfall, there was no sign of Briasia. During the search of the area, they find a child's flip-flop. So there was a flip-flop that they found down there, and we just want to make sure if it's okay. some, if something she would wear or not, if it was hers, okay? Uh, yeah, but I know Quickstar will do that, and then 
tomorrow during the day, I'm sure one of those copy places. I'm sure, it's it all and over even Facebook. if you talk to them and you show them, I'm sure they'll be even willing to do something. For free, that's yep. what I was yep. saying. That's what I would. But imagine. we already, you know, going to put them out. But, but that's a blessing. That's a blessing. So Thank you. So we're going down to the station. So with everything, so no, um, that's not hers. Okay. So there's behind the, the scenes type stuff. Okay, we we're doing search warrants. We're doing pinging the phones. Okay. Okay. Um, but we have his mobile home down there. Uh, the FBI is down there. Mm -hmm. um, Everybody is working on it, okay? It doesn't end, okay? I know, but it's 9.31 and I haven't heard from her. No way. I can't. No, I know. No, that's not her shoe. No, not her shoe. Not her shoe. no not her we just had to make sure, okay? Yeah, but we appreciate it. Hey. Hey. We, not okay. okay? I can't go to sleep with that. Like, what the fuck? It's 9.30 and she's nowhere. Nowhere. I can't even talk to him. What the fuck, man? She's dead. What the fuck? Um... Henry Dinkins was a person of interest in the case. FBI Special Agent James McMillan said that the investigation focused on Dinkins early because he was one of the last people to have seen Briasia. Henry had also been granted parole months before Briasia was killed, having been released from prison ahead of schedule in March 2020. The Iowa Board of Parole granted Henry Dinkins parole from a Davenport minimum security residential facility, determining he was able and willing to fulfill the obligations of a law-abiding citizen. At the time he was granted parole, Dinkins was awaiting trial on felony charges in Illinois for possession of meth with intent to deliver steaming from an April 2019 traffic stop. Records show Dinkins appeared in an Illinois courtroom on July 8, 2020 for a conference ahead of a July 27 trial date. Because Dinkins had failed to notify authorities when he moved in to live with Andrea, he was taken into custody just days after Briasia's disappearance for violating sex offender registry requirements imposed on him from a 1990 conviction when he was 17 years old that involved third-degree sexual abuse of a five-year-old girl. He was also forbidden to have contact with minors at all. So knowing that he is likely involved in Briasia's disappearance, they decided to go ahead and charge him after he was arrested. They also found searches for child pornography in his phone. Even in jail, Henry would not confess to what happened to Briasia. Months would end up going by and there was still no sign of Briasia. The FBI offered a 10000 reward for information in the case and crime solvers offered an extra 3500 A new story popped up about her disappearance. Interestingly enough, Henry's cellmate claimed that he made a pretty strange comment. He stated that Henry said they were never going to find her. He was wrong. About eight months after her disappearance, the search for Briasia came to a tragic end on March the 22nd, 2021. Three friends got together to go fishing on Credit Allen in West Devonport. It is a very rural area that's heavily wooded, and it's a big pond where people will go fishing. On this day, the men parked their car, and then on foot, they had to walk down the steep embankment to get to the pond. As they made their way down, one of the men looked over, and he sees something white lying in the brush. So the group walked over, and one of them actually picked it up. It wasn't until then when they realized they were holding a human skull. It was at this point they also saw her at the scene, and they could tell that the victim was black. And because Briasia's case was so widely known, they even wondered amongst themselves if it was her. So from here, they called 911. The Davenport Police Department quickly made their way to the scene, and after the crime scene was processed, the body was brought to the medical examiner for an autopsy.
Charles remains continued during day 10 of the trial of Henry Dinkins. He's the man accused of killing the 10 year old Davenport girl back in 2020. News 18 to Burns joins us in studio for our continuing coverage. I need Hi, John. Yesterday, we heard from Dr. Heather Garvin. She's the forensic anthropologist who reviewed Briasia Terrell's bones. Today, we're hearing from the doctor who performed Briasia's autopsy. Forensic pathologist Dr. Kelly Cruz discovered a bullet in Briasia's hair. She credits that placement to Briasia being shot in the jaw, the bullet going through the jawbone, exiting into her hair. But now the state honed in on the discoloration discovered on Briasia's shorts, the state attributing that to bleach. But the defense disagrees, asking Dr. Cruz if sunlight can change the color of clothing. While Dr. Cruz agreed, the state fired back fabric that's been out in the sun for a significant period of time, wouldn't you expect there to be consistent fading across the um, entire surface of that fabric versus what we're seeing on these shorts? I think you would expect to see consistent fading in all the exposed parts of that fabric. They could tell that it was a female African-American child who died from multiple gunshot wounds. The skull was later identified by dental records during the autopsy as being Brie Asia's and her cause of death determined to be gunshot wounds to the jaw where the bullet then traveled through her spine and then she was shot again in the back through her scapula. Two projectiles were found at the scene. One was in the dirt and the other was in her hair. They also recovered black shorts, a sports bra, and a large white t-shirt that Andrea said that Briasia was wearing the night that she went missing. Briasia's leg still had some skin tissue on it, so they were able to take DNA and compare it with Aisha. And soon enough, it confirmed that the body found on Credit Allen was indeed Briasia Terrell. A few weeks later, on April 3rd, a rescue and recovery team went to the scene to search the pond for a gun. Sure enough, they found a revolver. A test was ran on the gun and it confirmed that it was likely used in the murder. Now, the investigators weren't able to prove that the gun belonged to Henry, but they didn't even have to. Throughout their investigation, they found a ton of evidence linking Henry to Briasia's disappearance and now her murder. May 5th, 2021, Scott County Attorney Mike Walton announced charges against Henry Dinkins. Dinkins was charged with first-degree murder and first-degree kidnapping. Walton said that Henry was accused of shooting and killing Briasia. This morning, Henry Earl Dinkins was charged in the death of 11-year-old Briasia Terrell. These charges are the result of a nine-month investigation by the Danforth Police Department and numerous other agencies. And Captain Biggs is gonna talk a little bit about that in a minute. Because it is a pending case, we cannot talk about the results of the investigation in detail. The charging documents are public record and they read as follows. Murder first degree, on or about July 10th, 2020, Henry Dinkins did remove and confine, confine a child, BT, from 2744 East 53rd Street, Davenport, Iowa, and with premeditation, malice aforethought, and intent to kill BT, shot her with a firearm, causing her death. Kidnapping first degree. On or about July 10th, 2020, Henry Dinkins did remove a child, BT, from 2744 East 53rd Street, Damport, Iowa, without consent or authority or by deception to secretly confine and inflict serious injury, and as a result of the kidnapping, BT was murdered. While announcing charges is a significant step in this case, it is important to understand that bringing forth charges is not the end of the legal process, but just the beginning. The case will now proceed to court. June 16, 2021, Henry pleads not guilty to his first degree murder and kidnapping charges, and he opts for a bench trial, meaning a judge decides his fate rather than a jury. The trial began on August 20, 2023. There was not a lot of physical evidence during the search of Henry's RV. 
They weren't able to find Bree's DNA, and we know that's because Henry cleaned the RV with bleach. Bleach was actually found sitting next to the bed inside the RV. Authorities found the machete hidden above the microwave. And like his son DL said, there were white fibers from where Henry wiped it down with the rag. The state also had the man who placed Henry on the side of the road near her body at 4.30 a.m. That man actually died from a heart attack before Henry's trial, but they were still able to use his testimony. Soil samples collected from the scene where Briasia's body was found were compared to samples of soil and debris that were collected from Dinkins and Paula. The samples were found to be a match. When detectives looked inside the Impala after it was impounded, they noted the trunk smelled like bleach. When the trunk was fully open, officers observed an axe and a box of cleaning supplies. When technicians shined the blue light, they observed what was believed to be blood. The main thing the prosecution had going for them was the video surveillance of Henry driving all around town that morning and the videos of him buying bleach. They also had D.L. and Andrea's testimony. 2023, D.L. was 11 years old and he had to testify about everything he saw that morning. During the trial, the defense did not call one witness, and Henry didn't take the stand on his behalf. I mean, are you going to present any evidence, or what's the situation with the defense? <laughs> Your Honor, um, after speaking with Mr. Dinkins, uh, we have consulted. Mr. Dinkins is electing to stand on his presumption of innocence, number one, and not testify. Uh, so he's, not, he's going to uh, uh, exercise his Fifth Amendment right to remain silent. So with that, uh, the defendant is going to uh, rest his case and, and present no evidence. Thank you, Mr. Fries. Uh, do you wish to have colloquy with your uh, client to establish that that is his decision, or do you wish me to question him? I wish you would. Okay. Mr. Dinkins. I think you should. Mr. Dinkins, you've heard the statement made by your attorney. Uh, you understand you are not required to testify in your own defense. Do you understand that, sir? Yes, sir. Uh, but you truly have the opportunity, if you desire to testify, uh, in the course of uh, the trial in your own defense. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. And um, no one can force you to testify. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. And um, do you... Uh, do you need any further time to discuss uh, this matter with your attorneys? No, I don't, sir. And after that discussion, uh, you've made a knowing and voluntary election not to testify. Is that correct? Correct. Mr. Fries, do you think there's any further colloquy that needs to be had? I would simply say that I've had a number of conversations with Mr. Dinkins, both last week and again today. And uh, uh, it's been a full, complete, and fair discussion. Um, so I think his decision is well grounded. Thank you. In considering the evidence presented, the court found that the state had met its burden of proof. And the court found beyond a reasonable doubt that Henry committed murder in the first degree. Dinkins was sentenced on October 11, 2023, and Judge Henry Lantham would sentence him to two mandatory life sentences for the kidnapping and murder of Briasia Terrell. Mr. Dinkins, pursuant to this court's finding, you guilty on September 15th of 2023 of murder in the first degree in violation of Iowa Code Section 707.1, paren 1, paren A, and as provided by Sections 902.1, it is the judgment and sentence of this court that you be committed to the custody of the Iowa Department of Corrections for the rest of your natural life without the possibility of parole. Pursuant to this court's finding, you guilty on September 15th, 2023, of kidnapping in the first degree in violation of Iowa Code Section 710.2, and as provided by Iowa Code Section 902.1, it is the judgment and sentence of this court that you be committed to the custody of the Iowa Department of Corrections for the rest of your natural life without the possibility of parole. 
District Court Judge Henry Lantham explained there were several points that he said proved Dinkins was guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. July 9th, 2020, exactly three years ago, since the last time I saw my baby girl, when I dropped her clothes off for her in DL after I got off work and showered and headed over to the Jersey Ridge Apartments complex. Once I got outside the complex, Briasia running out, smiling as she always does, a smile that can light up a room, any room. We spoke for a few minutes while she held her dog, Chloe. She said she loved me, and I watched her run around to the apartment complex while her lovely locks bounced away around 6.30ish. Those are my last words with my baby girl. So I wrapped my mental around her face, her last words she said to me. The amount of pain I felt and feel that no mom should ever have to feel because, man, that stuff hurts real bad in a different spot. I didn't even know it existed until you, Henry Dinkins, changed that for me. Broke my trust and emotions I had the day you took my baby girl from me and just gunned her down like she was nothing and left her and never said a word at all. It's really painful that a statement could bring so much anger. I have a number of questions for you, Henry Dinkins, surrounded that night that played through my mind every day. Did she want me? Was she scared? Did she see those gunshots coming? Did you shoot her while she was trying to get away? Did she scream for help? Did she beg you to stop? Did you see in her face when, you, when she realized she was shot the first time? What was her last words? Did you stay and watch my baby die? How long did she suffer? Did you watch the life leave from her beautiful hazel eyes? What did you do to my son? Why? Do you know the answers? To any of these questions I ask, huh? Henry Dinkins, why you sit in, sit in this courtroom as if, as if this shit don't hurt you? Watching you, watching you during these proceedings that isn't right. You sit there with smiles and chatter during sensitive things and then try to speak to me when you never once spoke to me after July 14, 2020. You remember. When I saw you in Scott County Jail telling me you didn't do this, but why you haven't said nothing then? Why? Henry Dinkins, closure doesn't exist here in this case. Justice doesn't exist here in this case. You didn't just take away my baby's life. You took it away. You didn't just take away my baby's life. You took away everything from me. My family's sense of security, laughs, health, and potential. Potential for, for Briasia to be someone's wife. The potential to be a mother, a college graduate, prom, everything. Oh, oh, my baby girl, Henry. I went from believing I wasn't the best mom, but made things happen, but best I could to down in myself day in and day out as what kind of person am I not to have protected my daughter? I've broken myself down many a times over and over, analyzing text messages, calls, and conversations about everything, trying to figure out what I could have done differently. I watched my oldest son completely lose his childhood and be the cast of being the man of the house for me because I was truly broken the day I got the call standing, stating they found my daughter. I'll never forget. March 22nd, 2021, around 7.30 p.m. Told they, they told me they had information I had been waiting on, so that night my tummy was in knots, and all I did was cry, and I held my pillow so tight, trying, trying to hurry the nightfall so I could get up, so I could rush the kids to school and get on, get on that highway and, and near DeWitt, March 23rd, 2021. Once I got out there, it was a feeling I can't even describe because it was the snuggle on my heart. Mentally, I was going the same because that was a different feeling in my body. I wasn't used to. I kept myself covered from the media footage that was other while I shed so many tears inside because I couldn't describe that my daughter laid behind those squad cars and big RV man. I couldn't do nothing to save her. All I got a glimpse of.
all I got was a glimpse of a of a damn blue bag, man, that crushed my whole soul. I promise, broke me down, and still am. And my son commits to every hurt need I need, and still does. I watched my youngest baby. I watched my youngest baby become unre unrecognizable. At times, with the amount of anger he sits and holds to from this trauma you put him through, he's so hurt he has no idea how to even understand or even cope with the loss of his best friend, partner in crime, his sister who helped him through so much of his life. He would too overcome this and gain himself back and be somebody. He would not be what you have put him through or even made him sit through. We are suffering from so much with anxiety and depression at the top of our list. I can't work at times because all the trauma on top of the world of things I encounter at most jobs, the social media crap pushed me, pushed me into a shell I haven't been able to shake quite yet. Our lives changed. Three years went past us with no stops right before our rise. And here we, here we are in this courtroom seeking the justice she deserved so she could be laid to rest properly. Still yet, this, is, this all feel like a movie. I haven't changed the channel too because this can't just be it. Like, that's all. That's the piece that sinks in and still hurt because I thought hearing you get a life sentence with no possibility of parole will help me sleep at night. And it just doesn't because she didn't have to be gunned down like that nor left like that out there. Like, she was just trash. She didn't deserve that. She deserved to have her lifeless remains shown across the TVs. Like, like she did. She, she did it, Henry. Henry Dinkins. So whatever you get won't be enough because your family get to come, come to see you. And my baby is just that, just gone. And never, ever, ever coming back as she left me July 9th, 2020. Peace, understanding, and forgiveness will never come. I also truly hope what you did to her will haunt you for the rest of your life. I'll hold on to those good memories we shared and in, in not how you left her and how she, had, how she laid across that damn creepy swamp place thing where you left her and said not one word. How could you? How could you be such a monster, Henry? I am thankful for the justice for Breezer Terrell and my baby boy. The murder of Breezer had ripple effects throughout the city of Davenport, Iowa. There are memorials of Breezer throughout town, and still to this day, random people come around to pay their respects. And it is clear that no matter how much time passes, her memory will never be forgotten. It is. It's emotional. Uh but it means everything to me right now because I've been waiting for this day. I've been waiting three years, three long years, and I've been through the most. My son has been through the most, and we're here. And I'm, I'm so happy to finally be here because I can't wait until she get the justice that she deserves and, and we get her back and we able to kind of, you know, start healing just a little bit more. We started as her billboards and we're going to finish as her billboards. So out here, we're, we're just trying to, you know, bring a peaceful, a peaceful thing here you know as far as just screaming justice for Breezer we couldn't can't scream it inside at the moment but we gonna for sure scream it out here so it means everything to us out here Breezer was born on December 4th 2009 in Davenport Taisha Lankford she attended Jackson Elementary School Breezer was known as a truth teller she will always be remembered for her ability to uplift people and could bring a smile to anyone's face she was a young girl full of creativity, wisdom, ambition, and independence. She enjoyed all the things a child her age would love. She enjoyed playing basketball, fishing, coloring, and watching TikToks. All right, guys, that is it for me. Please do me a favor and like and share this video. If you have not already subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and comment below on your thoughts of this case. Alright guys, until next time, take care of you.